there folks and welcome to a new series you'll notice um, this is not a spaceship uh, but this is a this is the Piper Comanche from A to A simulations and I'm running this in prepared 3d version 3 and yeah uh, as you guessed it I'm gonna be doing some more flight sim videos that's kind of my main thing to be honest um, the survival stuff is uh, fun but this is what I really love to do so um, yeah so the long-awaited start back to flying online so um, well not online on video I should say but this is um, a wonderful uh, plane and what I'm going to be doing with this series is let me just show you the sim is actually paused at the moment um, I've got this program called FS passengers and it allows you to create uh, a company buy a plane, load it with passengers and um, fly to a destination uh, and basically get scored, um, earn money and kind of progress through into a thriving business. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just, well actually I've already created, let me just show you what I've done. So I've already created, yeah, I've already created the company. I've called it YouTube Airways and I've already brought this actually have I brought this is it this particular one um, uh, that's I'm not sure actually all right I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna sell this one sell selected plane for quite a lot less yep that'll do right so that's that um, now we need to know what flight we're doing. So I thought we would do a flight. We're at, currently at Lyd Airport in the south of the UK, and um, I thought we'd fly over to Latuke, which is uh, a journey I would absolutely love to do or planning to do in the summer in real life. So um, just kind of a bit of preparation for that. So I thought that'd be fun. So what we need to do is go to flight. We need to make sure and pause it first. Our parking brake needs to be set, and um, I think we can then start the flight. Yeah, we'll disable the weight. Okay, we'll add in our passengers and in our luggage, and I'm just going to turn that down in my earphones. Right, so what you need to do is set the destination. We're going to Latuke, which is LFAT, or Lima Foxtrot Alpha Tango. Uh, set. And we need to set the flight type, which is just a normal flight. And that's pretty much it. So, if we get into the cockpit. Now, Obviously in a small general aviation aircraft like this we're not going to have crews so a lot of these things are disabled because we don't we've only got two passengers and uh, so but we'll work our way up slowly so I wanted to just see um, what this flight is like have I loaded it into the flight planner no I haven't so we'll do that um, we'll do that we're going to fly VFR and the route is very straightforward uh, we're actually going to probably climb up to about six, let's call it yeah, 6,000 feet that'll do, depending on cloud and stuff um, it already exists, we don't want to remove the aircraft, right that's that it's pretty cloudy here um, the other thing I want to do is just get up my uh, this one. Okay, uh, the maintenance. Oops, I've closed it. How oh, silly. Let's try that again. I think it was that one. Yeah. So this is our map, and this is the uh, the route that we're going to be taking. So I'm just gonna. You're not going to see this, but I'll put this onto another. Well, I have to undock it first, and then this is going to go on to another screen just so I can track our progress of where we're going. It's kind of cool. You can zoom in and out and. You can uh, see VORs and NDBs and stuff on there, so that's quite useful. So yeah, the weather's powered by Active Sky as usual, so uh, we're in for a, a pretty, pretty good and solid Altimeter. flight, I think. Um, 
So the runway, I believe, is over here. What I might do is just change the view. We'll have a quick look at the uh, top-down view. So we are... That's us right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off in... I've checked the winds and they're coming from the west. So we're going to taxi straight forward, take a uh, right-hand turn onto runway 303 and then uh, take off in this direction and then and then uh, if you can just see here so we take off sort of into the this direction and then lid is basically pretty much um, it's actually about here if my calculations are correct um, it's the shortest hop you can make from from the UK to uh, to France so that's basically what we're going to do so let me just jump back into the cockpit uh, where are we? Views. Change view. Okay, and with that, we will be on our way. So I need to make sure I don't hit this van. So let me just. Um, by the way, just for your information, I'm not doing everything, you know, exactly by the book. So uh, I think we cleared the van just about. Oh, there's a bunch of people there. Yeah, so. Um, don't expect proper procedures and stuff. You're more than welcome to tell me what I'm doing wrong. But um, yeah, this is more about just flying and uh, having fun and seeing some of these uh, areas. So I'm using SciTech panels. So I'm not. I'm going to do all. I'm going to do the lights and things um, on there just to save me from moving around and giving you motion sickness too much. It's kind of more immersive as well for me. <laughs> okay, so we can assume our run-up checks are all fine, our appropriate lights are on for taxiing, and then we'll just stop at the threshold. I'm getting a little bit... frame rates are not very good. Let me just check this. Well, they are very good, but they're not... it's a bit jerky. Don't know why. We'll monitor that. Uh, let me just turn that back off. Okay, so with that... oh. That's bizarre. It's not quite what I had in mind. Um, for some reason, my landing light is bound <laughs> to the ignition switch. It seems anyway. Landing lights. Okay, I said all that, and we'll have to do it manually. Also, the strobe needs to come on. Fit for a heat. We might as well put on. Everything else is fine. We should have um, well put the mixture full rich. We were leaned a bit for ground, which is good. Okay, and we'll get underway. So our flaps are currently all the way down. Uh, there we go. We'll set them for takeoff. Whoops. Sorry, I'm trying to do too many things at once here. Right, so let's. Uh, you can see there's very little wind. The wind sock is pretty. Uh, not very flappy aroundy. That's a technical term. Alright, so what. Okay, so we've got no flaps. So we'll put one stage of flaps down. We don't really need it. We've got the longest runway. Lid is a really long. a long runway, but anyway. Okay, and with that, we'll assume we're clear for takeoff and we'll get uh, this journey underway. So we'll just power up to about 60%, make sure everything's fine, and then set takeoff power. We're looking to rotate about 70 knots, about now. And we are up, so positive rate, and landing gear goes up. Okay, now if you look down in my uh, bottom left hand corner, you'll see we've got some uh, uh, passenger dissatisfaction because of turbulence. Now that's completely out of my control, obviously, but... Um, 
perfectly safe, nothing to worry about. And we can put our flaps up. Okay, and we'll start a right hand turn to go across the English Channel. It's quite windy actually, so no need to be afraid. Passengers, completely normal. Alright, so we'll fly that heading just for now. And then we'll, yeah, just keep monitoring that. So there we go. So we'll climb up to about 6,000. Maybe that's a bit overkill. Maybe we'll just, we'll just go above these clouds here just to make it a bit more comfortable for the passengers and uh, we'll stick with whatever that altitude is it's probably not it's probably at this rate going to be about four and a half thousand maybe five at the most so that'll do all right i don't know if i'm shouting so i'm just going to put the headphones in that will quieten the engine down a bit hopefully i'm not shouting um, all the textures you see or the, the uh, certainly the cloud textures which are pretty stunning are supplied by uh, Rex texture, texture Direct and the ground textures are all um, Orbex, I've got FTX Global uh, FTX UK, uh, all of the scenery basically that they make I totally buy into, I think it's excellent so um, yeah Speaking of Orbex and scenery, I'm really, really looking forward to um, the Dovetail Games Flight School coming out just in a few days, really, 24th of May. So that's sort of next week. Um, long anticipated. Seen some really great uh, clips online. Looks fantastic. And uh, I think it's going to be a really wonderful addition to the flight simulator community and hopefully get more people flying because the whole point of um, flight school is that it you know does what it says on the tin it will take you from knowing nothing to be able to do you know what we're doing today and beyond so um, really quite cool um, it's tempting when you get a flight when you first get a flight simulator just to throttle up and go but like kind of gets boring quickly you need to really I think to properly enjoy the full immersive um, effect of flight simming is to really you know to really know what you're doing he says so I'm just gonna throttle back a bit um, which will bring the nose down and we'll just uh, trim for cruise altitude um, I mean I first got into flight simming back in, oh gosh, 96, 97, Flight Sim, I think it was Flight Sim 96, anyway, it was it was very, very primitive, but, um, you know, like all these things, they get better as the technology moves on. We've got a few storm cells over there, so we need to be a little bit careful about that. That's, oops. And uh, as we get closer to those storm cells, we will certainly... Uh, be jostled around a bit. So I'm going to just change our flight path just slightly just to avoid that. I think yeah, it doesn't look much clearer. What we might do, depending on that should be okay. Famous last words. And by the way, that is completely accurate. There are storms floating around here in this area. I live in Brighton, so it's just further up the uh, f further this way along the coast. And we've got yeah, there's definitely some isolated thundery showers around, so that is accurate. Okay, so we want to be on heading about one one three ish.
Okay, and we'll see. Yeah, it's pretty turbulent, but anyway, maybe you wouldn't. Yeah, you probably wouldn't cross the channel in weather like this. Well, maybe you would. This this uh, Comanche is pretty robust, to be honest. I wouldn't. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't fly in these conditions. But then I'm not IMC rated or anything like that, so I wouldn't be allowed to anyway. But it's pretty pretty nice um, clouds there. These are weird. These are kind of almost identical. I've never seen that before. Yeah, so this might get a little bit choppy through here, but uh, I'm sure you know, well, even if you don't know, I, I, I'm not really sure on my audience and whether they're, you know, flight sim fans or whether they're fans of zombies and uh, space uh, exploration and stuff like that, but um, the Dovetail games, again, which make, uh, which have made um, the train simulator which I'm told is very good. I'm, I'm not that into trains, to be perfectly honest. I'm just not. Um, there we go. But uh, the um, the simulator that's coming out later in the year. So we've got flight school coming out in a few days' time, and we have the big main flight simulator, dovetail flight simulator, coming out s at some point this year. Promises to. Well, it doesn't promise, but I think if they get it right it's going to be an absolute game changer and um, I really hope they do get it right I think from the questions and the feedback and also the way uh, Dovetail um, Flight School looks I think they are going to get it right um, so it's it's uh, yeah it's pretty exciting because uh, Again, you, uh, I don't know how many of you know, I'm sure some of you do, but the simulators um, that we're used to, including Prepared 3D, which is what we're flying in now, is all based, uh, albeit somewhat loosely in terms of Prepared 3D, on, on the old FSX, which is 12 years old now, I think. Um, so what that means is, is that the technology hardware has moved on significantly since then and of course um, if the software doesn't uh, then you're bound by by the software limitations and that's what we've been experiencing in, in flight the flight simming world since then really we've had a few Microsoft flight was a, a absolute disaster it was a sort of arcade very pretty but um, totally not what the flight, flight simulator community wanted um, from Microsoft and that flopped uh, went bust within a year I think it didn't last long there was no, so they've stopped all um, support and development of that product which is annoying because I brought it and I remember thinking this could be really great oh it's only Hawaii or Alaska uh, and then thought, well, you know, they'll update that. That'll kind of open up, and it never did. And then, you know, you hear that it's they've stopped all development, and you feel like you wasted your money, basically. But anyway, that is all in the past. And Dovetail, I think, are going to do a fantastic job at revamping this wonderful uh, hobby and give us what we all want. Um, oh, the other thing is that the current generation of simulators that we that we use, so. Prepared 3D, um, FSX Steam Edition. Both of those programs are 32-bit. So Dovetail um, Flight School is going to be 64-bit, which is excellent news. Right, I'm just watching our altitude. We have to be careful. This cabin uh, isn't pressurized, as far as I know. I don't think it is, no. So we just need to be a little bit careful. We're good that we're um, avoiding the clouds but uh, we're going to be we're basically three quarters of the way over the channel now so I'm going to throttle back and we'll make a gentle descent into uh, the northern part of France in fact straight ahead about 114 degrees is 
is actually the glide slope for the 2K. So it's a pr it's a very short hop, um, but you have to do all the precautionary things of uh, that you would need to do in real life. You know, because if you're passing over a large body of water in a single engine plane, then you need to take precautions. So at this point in the real world, we would be wearing life jackets. Um, and we would have worked out the uh, the glide ratio in case we had an engine out at some point over the over the water. So you, you have to fly at a height that will allow you to get get you to land um, and all that sort of thing. So that's that's from a, an aviation point of view really interesting as a pre uh, PPL pilot myself. So. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're just descending through this cloud. I throttle down as much as I can without getting that warning on, which means, basically, do you know that you're idling the plane without without the gear down? I'm sure there there is a way of turning it off, but anyway, it's quite handy. So it'll be a bit bumpy as we go through these clouds, and especially as they're a bit stormy as well. So. There might have be some rain, to be perfectly honest. Okay. Oops. So at this point, we would definitely be in IMC conditions. So I'd be watching these gauges here, m most notably this, keeping my wings level, making sure I'm in line with the horizon, so not turning and also watching my vertical speed so that I'm not um, descending too quickly and then obviously keeping an eye on our, on our airspeed indicator to make sure we're not exceeding the uh okay so we we got we do have some turbulence here and the passengers are getting a bit scared so you'd be making an announcement at this point I, I didn't turn the uh seatbelt signs off because um well you wouldn't really in a plane like this on a such a short journey, especially with semi rough weather. So uh but that should subside once we break through these clouds. Okay, I got a feeling it is raining. I think I can hear some more rain on the windshield. Possibly, or maybe it's just the sound of the airframe creaking as we uh, get battered by these winds. But anyway, all right. So there's France. So I'm just so Le Touquet is kind of on this estuary dead ahead um, it makes for quite an interesting approach so it really is pretty bleak and murky out here though not very nice weather for flying and it will make for an interesting uh, crosswind wind landing I think okay so we're just gonna maintain that heading and come on in you can see by the 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 waves on the um on the sea that the w the wind is pretty uh crazy okay but things have calmed down a bit our passengers are feeling more comfortable which is good what i plan to do with this um series is uh do mostly short hop flights but in different aircraft all the way up to maybe like a 737 uh, when we can afford to buy one that would be a lot of fun maybe do some short hops around Europe um, maybe some in Australia in fact if you want to give me some flights to do that would kind of make things good for me and easy I spend a lot of time thinking about where should we fly or where should we fly to and from so, um, so if you have your favorite airports 
I kind of I don't want to just do a flight from an airport and land back at the same airport. I'd like to do journeys and build up some hours in uh, FS passengers. So if you can recommend short hop routes, um, and they can be as exotic as you like, you know, we can anywhere in the world. Um, that would be a lot of fun. All right, so we're slowly making our way towards Le Touquet, where you would land and uh, go and have a long, lazy lunch. And if you're spending the night, you would definitely have wine and cheese. Well, I would anyway. Um, take full advantage of the fact that you're in France. Have a croissant for breakfast, and then head back in the morning. What could be better? Not that that's really stere stereotypical, but I love French wine and French cheese, and I do love croissants as well, so there we go. You can't help what you love. So that's the town of Le Touquet. How's it looking down there? It's kind of cool. Can you see the um, the hazy sort of effect on the lights? I quite like that. That's pretty realistic. I'm not liking those micro stutters though. I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe it's because I'm recording at the same time. I'm not sure, but yeah, sh definitely shouldn't be seeing those. All right, so let's just have a quick look. So there is our runway. Um, Maybe we'll have a little jaunt around the town and then we'll come in. Um, we're flying, we've got a tailwind at the moment, so we need to um, land as close to where the wind is heading towards us. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a circuit around here and we'll land on this side. I don't know what the procedures are for this airport, I need to learn them uh, for when I do it in the for real. Uh, in the summertime, well, it is the summertime, but when it gets a bit warmer and when the weather's better. So, um, yeah, but not f not right now. Okay, a bit more turbulence. It's quite normal when you uh, transition from uh, land, sorry, from sea to land. Okay, so that thing turning above my head there is the trim wheel. That's me just relieving a little bit of pressure on the... Uh, yoke just flaring up a little bit I don't want to go below a thousand feet really at the moment and I want to bleed off a bit of this speed hard to bleed off speed when you're when you've got a tailwind which is why it's not slowing down very much but that will soon as we make a left turn that will soon uh, come down and we can add flaps in and get stable for landing basically and we'll see what our passengers thought of this uh, flight. I think it's going pretty professionally so far. I'm not sure about the in-flight entertainment, but uh, and I'm not sure many gin and tonics have been consumed either. But anyway can't have it all can you oh yeah you can hear the thunder yeah it would not be pleasant flying conditions really wouldn't okay I can't remember what my scenery is set on at the moment but um I absolutely can't wait I'm gonna do this same flight in flight school next week and we're going to have a good old look at the scenery and the difference and I think it's going to be pretty impressive I really do Altimeter. okay yeah these micro stutters are real it's not good Okay. 
Okay, right. I think we're going to throw the gear down. Gear down. Because I don't seem to be bleeding off this airspeed. And I probably need to drop all the way to idle to do that. That's a bit better. Okay. Alright, we'll go stage a flap as well. And uh, let's get this beast down. So, this is essentially kind of our base leg now. Uh, not much of a base leg, but we'll turn on to final. Pretty. Just come off that speed a bit. There we go. And as we come into the wind, we should notice a, a, a fairly. Oh, we're a bit low. We're very low. Uh, yeah, we should notice a drop in airspeed. We're not that low. There we go. You can see the airspeed bleeding off now. We'll put another stage of flaps in to help that. And I'm just trimming out and slowing this right down to make hopefully a nice smooth and stable landing score some points. So at this stage um, I'm really using the throttle to kind of not really moving the the yoke too much I guess so he says but yeah I'm trimming a little bit but once it's trimmed I'll be using the power to um, you know bring the nose up if we need to or bring the nose down so we'll put some more flaps that's full flap now so and we're still kind of fast so I'm just gonna bring the nose up a little bit and just try and line up a bit better we're bang on the glide slope so that's good that's hopefully where I tend to stay and we're just approaching 400 feet here and obviously the slower you get the more kind of wobbly feeling the the aircraft comes if you're traveling nice and fast when you're up there it's obviously a stiff sort of feeling no rude comments so yeah so that's why the landing phase is, is one of the most well and takeoff is the most critical because you're mostly landing because you're, you're at slow speeds you're flying at slow speeds so uh, we're still perhaps a tad too fast but anyway doesn't matter we've got a fairly big runway here okay I'm just trying to we're a little bit low now feed a bit oh, that's better all right, pretty much lined up. So just tiny adjustments, and uh, just setting her down on the runway. Hopefully on the center line. This micro stutter is really doing my head in. Okay, so here we go, and throttling back. Hear that stall warning? Hopefully. No. Anyway. Oops. Okay, a little off center there, quite a bit off center. But we are down. And things seem a bit dark to me out there. What time is it? Um dunno. Anyway. It's set actually to system time, so it would be getting a bit dark, that's why. Okay, so at this point we can clear up, which basically means put the flaps up um, and just make sure that we're in taxi mode. Landing lights can come off when we, oops, when we exit the runway. Uh, we'll do this left hand tax, this left hand uh, taxiway here. I'll just slow us down a bit. All right, cool. Here we are in France. I can almost taste the wine and cheese. Le 
2k airport dead ahead right I'm gonna immediately as soon as we stop I'm gonna immediately investigate why we're stuttering like this it should not be the case I've got a pretty alright mis machine uh, and it, I've never had it this bad could be the weather it could be because maybe I've got cloud layers set too high I don't know doesn't look like I have weather certainly um, makes things a lot more tricky uh, but yeah I've got a core i7 what is it 4 something something K not, it's not the latest generation of you know like the 600 series but it's pretty decent anyway and I've got a GTX 970 Yeah, so we shouldn't be experiencing all this stuttering. It's driving me bonkers. Anyway, I'll have a look at that and figure out why I'm not following the proper taxi lines. Just because I can't be bothered, and there's no traffic, so why do that? Anyway, here we are. So set the parking brake and um, actually turn the plane off power the engine down and we can even open the door how about that there we go um, our passengers are then disembarking I don't know why it would take 25 seconds for two people to get out but anyway what we'll do we won't wait that long we'll just click on end flight and we'll see what the report is um, okay so that's that's the name of that's where we're going to two passengers distance of 36 uh, nautical miles that's quite right that was a nice landing I have to say it was we didn't hear the stall warning so that's a shame but anyway um, flight time just over half an hour uh, exceptional flight our passengers are relieved to have landed safely after the extreme weather they experienced during landing I wouldn't say extreme I think this thing gets a little bit uh, to um, uh, over the top considering that the flight was perfect and the ticket price is low passengers on this flight think that your company's reputation should be 100% excellent so we're you start at 50% so you've got to prove your worth so we've got a slight increase there overall flight pilot bonus you made a very smooth landing perfect line no problems sa very satisfied landed at the scheduled airport that's always good you know I, I really passengers like that one um, extreme weather conditions during approach yeah I, I don't buy that I don't think that was particularly extreme at all in fact I thought it was very uh, gentle um, but anyway we made eight hundred and fifty dollars minus all of the uh, fuel costs and airport taxes and stuff so and two passengers so that's not bad so um, we'll record that flight that's gone into our logbook and uh, yeah so we're going to obviously do um, different flights and different aircraft and different payloads um, sh mostly short hop I'm not going to kind of or if we do slightly longer ones then I'm going to um, I'll cut the videos up so that you don't have to sit through long stretches of cruise of me rambling uh, about nothing in particular that would not be good so um, but yeah, if you've got ideas for flights, please um, comment below this one and then I'll know. Um, and we can do them. So I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Uh, pleasure having you on board and we'll see you on the next flight. All right, take care.